pray for a moment. Father God, speak to us this evening, challenge us, and inspire us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. So you will have heard, I'm sure, because I've already mentioned it once this evening, that we are looking at our vision as a benefice and an NEP. We have been dwelling in the Word over the last year or so, concentrating on Ephesians 2, verses 13 to 22. Home groups and PCC and leadership team have been pondering over this passage, pulling out words and phrases that have made us think. I've never really experienced dwelling in the Word before and find it absolutely amazing that each time I've spent time in this passage, a different word or phrase has triggered a thought that has made me question the workings of our beneficent LEP and where I and God fit in with all of it. So a bit of history for you. The Anglican parish of St Mary the Virgin Twyford and St James the Great Ruscom is one Anglican parish with one PCC. And the Twyford United Reformed Church joined with us in 2002 and we formed a local ecumenical partnership, an LEP. While we keep our own buildings and services, we have around eight United Services a year. We no longer have separate meetings, but share together in all decisions for planning and mission. The Church of England ministers and the United Reformed Church minister work as a team, along with youth workers and the children and families worker. We retain our own pastoral responsibilities, but we are all able to take services in all three churches, including presiding at Holy Communion. Both churches are still part of the structure of their respective denominations. And then in 2012, St Nicholas at Hurst joined us and we became a benefice. And a benefice is when an incumbent, the vicar, takes on the responsibilities of another parish. Now it's always good to have a plan, an idea of where you want to go in life. Some people I know have a five year plan or an idea of things that they would like to do and aims that they have for their lives. And you need a map if you're going uh, on a route, if you're going on a journey. And we are all on a journey, the four church congregations. We are on a journey together, and this process over the next few weeks is us metaphorically deciding on the best route to take. We are not all going to agree with every little turn, but what is essential to a good journey is that we have an input, we all have an input, a voice in the journey plan and the final destination. And that's why we're having this six week sermon series where we can consider the Bible and what Jesus is saying to us about our journey. Now it's exciting and a bit scary, but fundamentally essential to our spiritual well-being as a community of congregations wanting to be amazing for Jesus. This is not about what hymns we have on a Sunday or whether we process in and out. It's all about and only about putting and keeping Jesus at the centre. It's not, what we've got, it's not that we've got it wrong or that we've fallen out with each other and need some marriage guidance. Far from it. We are working really well together and have established good relationships. And we are now looking at a sort of marriage enrichment so that we can grow in every area of ministry. So Ephesians 2, which we've been dwelling in the word, verses 19 to 21. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. So what is a cornerstone and why is Jesus described as that? In relation to architecture, a cornerstone is traditionally the first stone laid for the structure. 
and all the other stones are laid in reference to it. And this ensured that remains of the building's original content were preserved with the structure throughout its life. As the chief cornerstone, Jesus ensures the stability of the whole system of our salvation. Jesus was and is the only plan of salvation. Isaiah 28 verse 16, Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. It is therefore essential, if we want to live the life that God wants for us, that we place Christ as the cornerstone of our lives. And why? Because Jesus ensures the stability of our lives and therefore the stability of our benefits and LEP. The passage in Philippians looks at the character of Jesus. It is written like a hymn, a song of praise. Paul is saying here that Jesus is God himself. Paul reminds us to have the same attitude or mind as Jesus. So we are called to have the same mindset, mentality, attitude about our life as Jesus did. Jesus, who being the ver in very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. And it is crucial for us to understand that in doing this, he did not cease to be God. God cannot cease to be God. He rather laid aside the glories and riches of heaven and the independent exercise of authority and added our humanity to his deity so that at one and the same time, fully God and fully man. Mind blowing. When he was on earth, he did not use his God powers to take advantage of the situation. Jesus did not use his divinity to go up. He used his humanity to go down, to go down and to serve. Jesus was born into poverty, mixed with all areas of society, ate at the table of tax collectors, mixed with sinners, and was so often criticized about the company that he kept. His mission was not about politics, it was about humanity, respect and life. And ultimately for Jesus, it was about dying. Life everlasting is what God wants for us, which begins on earth with Jesus as its cornerstone. Jesus was an amazing speaker. We know that the gospels are full of Jesus speaking to crowds and crowds of people. They knew that he was worth listening to. He attracted the masses not because he was flamboyant, but because he had the reputation of saying something that was worth listening to, something that was life-changing. Jesus was in the business of changing lives and setting people free. He wants that for all of us, even in Twyford, Ruscombe and Hurst. But we need and must put Jesus at the very centre of everything we do, every decision that we make. If we allow Jesus to be the very heartbeat of our being, then who knows what amazing things will happen. And I'm not saying that we're all going to become Billy Grahams, evangelising to the millions, but our, but our expectation of the Holy Spirit should be that lives will change, our communities will change, and we will change. What God did for Jesus, he will do for every Christian. He will change our humility into a glorified body. He will do it with the same power he uses to keep people humble to worship him. If we humble ourselves, God will exalt us in the end. Further on in Philippians uh, chapter 3 verse 21, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious bodies. And Philippians 2 verse 10, which we've heard this evening, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in earth and on heaven and under the earth. This is what we want for our benefits and LEP. We want to claim Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And it's a bold statement. 
But in order to live it, we need to have Jesus at the centre, the cornerstone, as individuals, as congregations, and as a benefit and LEP. So I'd like to encourage you to take part in the feedback sessions. All the home groups are looking at them. Anna is leading a discussion group on a Sunday late afternoon, and there's a midweek group for you to join on a Thursday, and consider questions that are posed each week by whoever it is that's speaking. They're by Zoom. Now I appreciate that that not be easy for everybody, but write down your thoughts, pass them on. Everybody's view is important. Everyone is valued. The questions that we've got this week are, how do we place Jesus as the cornerstone? How do we develop places and space to help us go deeper into our relationship with Christ? How could we work together in the light of this theme to become one household of God? and to tell or reflect upon a story when you have seen or noticed this theme being, theme being modelled in the church for the sake of God's world. All things for us to get our heads around this coming week and to feed back. I'm sure you all know the song about the wise man who built his house upon the rock. The foundations of that house were strong and firm because of the foundations and because of the cornerstone. We are building a strong and effective Christian community with our four churches. In order for us to be structurally sound, we need to build on the foundations of love and respect, but most importantly, to have the cornerstone of our building as Jesus. Amen.